Well, at last, I have been to see the new Harry Potter film. Oh, it, it's, it's really good. Well, I enjoyed it anyway. I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, my friend uh, didn't think much of it. It was yesterday I went, actually. Um, I went to the IMAX cinema in Greenwich, which is a long way from here, but I've got a friend I go with, uh, Ron, my friend Ron, so we went. Um, I left here in the afternoon, actually I, I had to get into London early because the film was at 8.30 at night. So I left here, sort of around about, um, I don't know, about, about, about three o'clock in the afternoon, drove into London, no problem at all, no traffic, nothing anywhere. The only thing is, of course, driving around during the daytime, instead of the night time, because usually I'm traveling around London at night or, or wherever I'm working at the time. I, I work in London most of the time uh, at night. And when I travel in at night, you see, you can go in bus lanes and you can park on single yellow lines and all this. During the daytime, it's a completely different story and you have to be so careful driving uh, perhaps where you aren't supposed to be driving or parking where you're not supposed to be parking during the daytime because these, these as I've said so many times before, you know, there's cameras. Forget about the parking, uh, tra uh, the traffic, the, the parking attendants that I'm always going. Forget about those. There's just cameras in the bus lane, cameras nicking you if you park somewhere dodgily. I mean, this is Big Brother. UK is Big Brother UK. That's what it is. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Listen to the man from the street, and I use the term man very loosely, of course, eh? So I drove in, and um, I parked at my mate's house. Now, he lives in kind of East London on Columbia Road, where they have a very famous flower market. And uh, so I put me, and, and, and then I have to put a little thing in the windscreen. You have to, it's like a scratch card. You know those scratch cards that you win money with? that you buy from a news agent or somewhere like that. It's a bit like one of those. And you scratch the time that you got there, and then I'm allowed five hours. Now, he gets these scratch cards as part of the um, deal that he lives in that particular area. So they come from the council. I don't know if he has to pay for them or not. And he gets so many of these a year so that he can give them out to visitors. Why? Because there's nowhere else to park. There's no parking meters or any. Well, there is actually. There is around the corner parking meters, but they're quite expensive. So you get one of these cards. He gives me a card, and I scratched off the time. Then I went up to his house and I waited, waited for him with his uh, his other half was there. Um, and uh, when I got there, I took a bag of things because I'm always looking if I'm going to visit someone that I know, whether it's my sister or a friend, or someone like that, I always have a little look around my cupboards to see if there's anything I don't want anymore and whether it could be useful to someone else. I don't like to chuck things out, dear. Do you? I hate chucking things out. I absolutely do hate chucking things out. So I always have a little look around to see what's what in the cupboards. So I had in my... I knew he ate fish. I knew he ate salmon. So I had a look in my cupboards, and there was an old tin of pilchards that I'd actually bought for my old cat, Tiny, who died in January. Oh, these things don't go off, do they? I mean, they last for years, dear. So it was a tin of pilchards and a tin of sardines. So I put them in my bag, and I took him... Um, I made a copy of the uh, recent Belushi's video uh, uh, karaoke night. All right, now, regular... Listeners to the show will know I made a, a video of our karaoke night at Belushi's a little while ago. Have you seen that yet? I mean, it's nothing spectacular. All we did was we stuck a camera in, in front of the area where people sung and uh, we recorded the entire night. If you want to find out where that is, then go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I, I better make a note of this. Um, Belushi's link. If you want to watch that video, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, right? Look for the show dated the... One. Hang on a minute. One. I think it's the... Uh, hang on a minute. So, Tuesday the 4th, okay? Tuesday the 4th of August, 2009. Go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, look for the show dated Tuesday the 4th of August 2009, 
and there you will see two links to the two parts of the Belushi's karaoke video. Okay, just click on either of those and you'll watch watch people singing. Uh, sadly, I know you're going to be disappointed. I am not singing on that particular program. I know, I know. We can't be singing all the time, dear. Really can't. <clears throat> so I, I, I put that CD in there. And was there anything else I can think of? I think that was it, actually. That was it. Because Ron is a bit stuck up. He's very, very, very house proud, as I've mentioned on this show before. Everything is in, in its place. It, you know, he's got one of those big televisions, the big flat screen televisions, what sits there. And in front of it are arranged a television magazine, you know, uh, listings magazine. There's a couple of remote controls and they're all straight and perfect on this on this unit. So I got into his house and uh, I, I said to his, uh, I said to Andy, that's his other half, I said, all right, I said, I've bought him a few things. I'll leave them on the table here randomly. So I took them all out of the bag and left them all over his work surface. <laughs> I said, he'll like those, wouldn't he? And Andy says, he says he hates mess, doesn't he? I said, yes, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> so that was it. So I had a bit of a chat with Andy and then uh, Ron arrived. He said, what's all this on here? I said, just a few bits and pieces I bought you. Oh, and there was a, uh, some, some, uh, a packet of tea. And uh, he, t he picked up these cans of... He said, what are these? I said, well, you eat fish, don't you? He said, I don't eat pilchards. And he says, what's this? I said, sardines. He said, well, I don't eat sardines either. I said, why not? They're fish. Fish is fish, isn't it? He said, I only eat salmon. I told you he was stuck up, didn't I? He only eats salmon. Oh, please yourself. So he put them back in my bag. How ungrateful is that? Never look a gift horse in the mouth. That's what I say. You shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. So that was that. He said, uh, we'll have something to eat before we go out. What do you fancy? Um, so there was a big discussion on what he couldn't get. He said, the trouble is, he can never decide what he wants to do. Always it's one thing, and then they can't decide what he wants to do. So then we had this big discussion about what we were going to have to eat for dinner. Eventually, we decided on a pizza. So, um, his other half is on his laptop. All right, he's, they've got apples. Oh, it's all very, it's all very sad. They've got exactly the same computer. Two apples. Right, two, you know, the, the white apple computer with the, with the apple logo on the front that lights up. I mean, beautiful pieces of kit. Don't get me wrong, beautiful piece of kit. It was like his and his. <laughs> sitting on there. You know, again, sitting on the sideboard, side by side, perfectly. Perfectly positioned on there. Right. So his other half, he's on the laptop and he says, Can you order um, from Domino's? Was it for, uh, from, from Domino's? It was from Domino's uh, the pizzas. And uh, he said, yeah, after I do it, well, you'll have to do them now because we're going to cinema later. So they had a little bit of a little bit of a thing, you know, going on there, uh, which, which was quite funny. He was telling him to order the, the, the Domino's pizzas and he was telling him he'd, he'd do it in a minute. Oh, it's fabulous. I do like to sit there and see people have a little bit of a go at each other. I mean, he couldn't do it on his laptop, Ron's laptop, because his battery was flat. I don't know why he couldn't have plugged it into the wall or anything like that. But anyway, so that's that. Eventually, we ordered the pizzas, which I offered to pay for. Oh, look at me. Generous Chris. You see, I can't wait to take people out to dinner, especially if it's a cheap one. I mean, I've got a thing about going out for pizza. I do like to go out for pizza or have one bought in. The ones from the supermarket are okay, but they never taste the same, do they? And my favourite pizzas, I have to say, are Domino's. So he's ordering these on the internet, and, and, and that's it. Now, we're looking at the clock now, and it's getting quite late. Um, we had to be at the cinema at 8.30 at night. Uh, and it's now about 7, 7.30, OK? So getting quite late. The pizzas are still not arriving. So he's rung up. And he says, where, where are you? He said, uh, and, and apparently the bloke in a, in a very strong foreign accent said, number 66. He said, well, I'm at number 200 and whatever he is. I can't remember what number he is. And the bloke says, well, I'm at 66. He said, no, you need to be at number 200 and something. And all the bloke kept saying was, well, I'm at number 66. Now, 
Unfortunately, Ron is not the most patient of people. It gets very agitated and very angry. Not with me, with other people. Uh, and unfortunately, he is the same driving as well. I get a little bit scared sometimes. I mean, he's the one that uh, drove Suko and her family around London. I arranged for him to, to drive them around in his posh car. And he drove them around London uh, quite well, actually. There wasn't, wasn't any, any frustration or shouting out the window at people then. But he is a bit like that. He, he looks, you know, if, if someone's done something wrong in the road or he thinks he's right, he gives them a look as he sits there in the car. It's a bit scary sometimes, and I have to put on my dark glasses and pretend I'm not actually in the car with him. Although I am. Are you a bit like that? He's, he's got no patience whatsoever. No, <laughs> he hasn't. He's got no patience whatsoever. So, he then, he's on the phone to this pizza bloke. He's then gone out the back, and me and Andy are sitting there watching the television, and uh, we could hear shouting, so we turned the sound off the telly so we could earwig to what he was saying, and he was screaming down the phone at this person. <laughs> this person who couldn't find the flat. Oh, and the swear words, which are not for this programme, boys and girls. Absolutely not for this programme. In the end, he rung the office and told him what had happened, and the bloke couldn't find this address, and also couldn't speak very good English, unfortunately, and he told him to forget the pizzas and wear, never order from there again, and slam the phone down. <laughs> so there we are. So we had no dinner before we went out. Poor little Chris was wasting away. I was wasting away, boys and girls. I was wasting away. Getting thinner and thinner while I was sitting there. Well, I wasn't actually, because he did have, though, a great family bag of Dor Doritos. Is it Doritos or Dortillas? I can never remember. I think it's Doritos. He had a big blue bag of those and a little, a little tub of Philadelphia cream cheese. Oh, and I sat there dipping these Doritos or whatever they're called into this Philadelphia cheese and putting them in my mouth. Oh, it was, oh, they were gorgeous. So I must have had half a bag of those and a couple of rows, uh, uh, ro rows of a bit of Galaxy fruit and nut chocolate. Uh, I mean, that did me. That was at about half past seven. Quite frankly, I'm glad. Uh, to be honest, I'm glad the pizza never arrived because then we went to the cinema. And um, while I was there, oh, now I know I often go on about food prices in cinema. And the last two times, I'm a little bit disappointed with myself because when we got to the cinema, which was an another easy drive in, there wasn't too much traffic at all. The, the Greenwich IMAX cinema. When we got there, he printed off the tickets because he ordered them all off the um, internet. And you just go in. He puts his card in the machine and it chucks out the tickets. All very clever, you know. Marvellous. So I then went and purchased... Oh, oh, by the way, we were sitting in the premier seats again. Thank you very much. Premier seats, dear. Very, very comfortable. Big, thick, leather chairs they are like that. So we sat, we, we were just on the way in. I bought a hot dog. £3.25 for a hot dog, which is, that is expensive, isn't it? Come on. It's way, way expensive. And I, you know, I, I, they taste, I don't know what they put in, they taste lovely. But all it is, is a bit of bread and a sausage and a little bit of tomato sauce. £3.25. It's dear, isn't it? I, sh I know I shouldn't have bought it. I shouldn't have, I should have, I should have stopped at a petrol garage on the way, or even better, made myself a nice ham and cheese and coleslaw or pickle sandwich and taking it in with me. Anyway, so I bought this hot dog, and then we went in the executive lift. Oh yes, dear, executive. We went in the uh, special lift, the gallery lift. Goes up to the top there. Got out there, and then they've got comfortable seats. I told you before, when I went up to this um, uh, premier seat, it's a bit like sitting in business class on a plane. Oh, it's lovely. Really nice, okay? Uh, and there wasn't many people up there. And then we had our free, uh, um, what are those things? Oh, God. 
They're like Doritos. I can't remember what they're called now. You know those? They're like crisps. What are they called? Um, is it Nanchos? Is it, are they called Nanchos? Or is that the name of a shop? Oh, I don't know. You know the things are. They're, they're, they're like crisps, but much thicker. And I think they're made, I don't think they're made out of potato. They're made out of something else. Anyway, so all those are included in the price. So we had some of those and a cheese dip. And I'm sitting there. And of course, then we were called into the film. And you're allowed, in, in the premier seats, dear, in the premier seats, you're allowed to take a tray of food in with you. How fabulous is that? So we had a full-up tray with a couple of glasses of Coca-Cola um, or Pepsi, whatever it was. We had uh, the, the um, uh, nan nan Nancho Dorita things. We had the cheese sauce. We had a little bowl of sweets, strawberry cream sweets, because I have these, a, big, a big bowl of Rose's chocolates on there. When I went to get mine, this 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 young woman in front of me, she the evil woman, she was she was nicking all the strawberry ones. I could see her doing it. So I thought, if I wait till she's finished, I won't get any. So I started picking them out while she was there, the same ones. We were having a competition trying to get the most. How dare she nick my strawberry roses? I like those ones in the orange on the orange creams the best, don't you? So we filled up our little bowl of those, and we got a popcorn. And then we went into the cinema. And it, it's, it's a massive screen, this IMAXing. Massive. And with 3D glasses. And I'm like, what are they for? I said, oh, apparently um, it's in 3D. Oh, right, OK. So I was quite excited by this and also scared. And that might sound stupid. I know, you know, it's a film. OK? Nothing is actually going to jump out the screen at you. But when I put these glasses on, I get a little bit scared. Don't know why. So I started eating my bits and pieces and I got to the popcorn. Of course, I picked up the wrong popcorn, didn't I? I got the salt one, which was a little bit, um, a little bit too, you know, too salty on the tongue. He had the sweet one. So we both sat there and ate his. And then I continued and ate mine as well. <laughs> Finished all the crisps and the Coke and all that. Sat back comfortably and put my glasses on. And first of all, before they went to the main film, they were showing... Um, a 3D uh, trailer for a new version of Scrooge coming out at Christmas, you know, with the, the ghosts of Christmas past. And it's going to star uh, Jim Carrey, I think. I, might, I, I don't know if... Actually, is it, was it a card? I can't remember now. Oh, was it a cartoon? Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, there's a new version of Scrooge coming out in 3D at Christmas. And they showed you a preview of that. And it's looking really good, boys and girls. So we must go and see that at Christmas, the new version of Scrooge. OK? And then it went into uh, a, a few other trials for other different things. And the 3D was just fantastic. It was. It was absolutely fantastic. Especially, you know, apart from the film itself, when, when the words, the captions come up, they stick out of the screen at you. And it was uh, a bit where there was snow falling down, and that falling down, every and that looked really good. It looked like there was snow falling down all around the cinema. Very, very clever. And then it went into the main Harry Potter film. Now, um, what I don't understand is that the first 15 minutes, about the first 15 minutes of the film, is in 3D, OK? And it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing, the effects. They seem to have sussed this one out now, because I've been to 3D stuff before, and uh, it's not always been very good. i tell you who, who else is very good at 3D. Disney. If you go to um, Disney, um, the, you know the theme parks? Disney, uh, what's it called now? Disney, Disney, Disney World? Disneyland? You know, the one in Florida, the one in Europe, all, they've got them all over the world now. If you go to one of those, they do have a couple of 3D experience films, which were about, I think, around about 20 minutes long. One is Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And the other one is the um, Under the Sea, Under the Sea, with lots of fishes and all that swimming around. And it's, it's marvellous, the effects, while you're sitting there with these 3D glasses on. 
Well, let me tell you, the Harry Potter film in 3D is just as good, if not even better, than the 3D I've seen at the cinema. Right? Now, I don't know if this was exclusive to the IMAX cinema. What's that noise? Did you hear that? Oh, how strange. I just heard a very strange noise in here. And I've no idea what it was. Did you hear that? Was it this? I've got a, a soft toy here and... Do you know, I have no idea what that was. How very, very strange. Oh my word. Was it this thing? I don't know if it's got a soft toy on the floor here. Has it got anything in it that's making it make a noise? I can feel something hard in there. Is it an on off button or anything? Well, I, I really don't know what that was. Oh. Well, I've got a lion. Just a minute, there's a lion on the floor as well. Oh, and a teddy. Well, don't know what that was. What's this? No, it's not that. It's not that. Is it the lion? Is there anything in there? No. Well, I'm, I'm sorry about it. I don't know what that was. Ooh. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, so as I say, the effects, um, the 3D effects were fantastic for the first 15 minutes of Harry Potter. But then you get an indicator, and I don't know if that is, that is exclusive to the IMAX cinemas. I don't know if you can go anywhere and get that same 3D experience. But nevertheless, after 15 minutes, you get this little symbol come on at the bottom of the cinema screen, which is kind of a red pair of glasses with a cross through them, indicating for you to remove the glasses now because the 3D bit has finished. And then it goes into the rest of the film. What I don't understand is that why on earth would you do the first 15 minutes in 3D and not the rest of it? I just don't get I don't understand that at all, do you? I wonder why. I mean, was it too expensive to do it like that? I doubt that. I mean, that, that film must be taking millions. Millions and millions of pounds. But why, oh why, just do the first 15 minutes in 3D and not the rest of it. Don't get that at all. If anyone knows why a film company would do that, please let me know, because I have no idea. I just don't get that at all. Let me know. There's an email address to the show. My name's Chris Reardon. This is United Kingdom Talk, our three times a week talk show. The email address, please feel free to join in at any time, is Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk now we don't do instant emails on the show uh, usually they take a uh, two three maybe four shows to come up but they do i promise you eventually come up in the show okay sometimes uh, if you're a little bit if we're a little bit busy with emails or maybe i've been chatting on too much um then we don't have much time for emails but they do eventually come up i promise you okay chris at united kingdom talk.co.uk why on earth would the film company only film the first 15 minutes of the film in 3d because for me i have to say that did spoil it a little bit once you took the glasses off it was still fabulous but it wasn't as good as with the glasses on why would they do that don't know. So we then went into the film. Um, I'm not going to tell you what happened in the film. It has a very, very sad ending. Or I thought it was very sad. Okay? Won't tell you what happens. 
but nevertheless it has a sad ending. Something that I didn't expect because I don't read the books, I haven't read the Harry Potter books. I find it, I've, I've mentioned this before, I do find it very hard to read a whole book unless it's been split up into bits. I showed you that book, um, uh, I told you about that book I'm reading at the moment, Blood, Sweat and Tea, which is about this ambulance, this guy who works on the London Ambulance Service and he writes about his day-to-day -day experiences and that's kind of split up quite nicely. I find it hard to read, but even if they're in chapters, I do find it hard to read a long book. So I don't read the books. <coughs> I also don't read the film summaries in newspapers and things like that because it gives the plot away. And uh, I do hate that. And certain newspapers here in the UK always give you give away the story that's going to come up in a particular TV program. I mean, some of these newspapers pay lots of money to people who are on the inside so that they can get the story in their paper before anyone's seen it on the telly. And I think that's an awful way to spoil entertainment. I really do. You need the element of surprise. It's a little bit like while I'm DJing. Sometimes people come up to me and say, oh, what's the next record, Chris? And I say, well, I won't tell you that. And they're like, why not? I said, because that will spoil the element of surprise. But I might not like it. Well, that's how it is then. You might not like it. Then again, you might love it. You see, I do like the element of surprise. So I'd been keeping away from all these summaries about what was going to happen in the film. And then when it got to this bit at the end, I was, I was really shocked. Really shocked how it finished. Which you'll see. OK, if you go and see it. The film as a whole, um, I enjoyed it very much. I thought the story was good. The acting's fabulous. Always is. And, uh, uh, especially one bit where Weasley, is it Weasley? He, he falls in love because someone's given him love to potion and he's all over the place. Oh, I cannot but hope that... F <coughs> oh, excuse me. I cannot hope but fall in love at one time again, I suppose. Do you remember that, being in love? Those of you who are perhaps over the age of, shall we say, 35, falling in love isn't the same as it was when you were a teenager, is it? If at all you do. I wonder why that is. It's, it's a shame that we lose the innocence, perhaps, of love as we get older. On the other hand... If we do start seeing someone, it doesn't work out, we don't get hurt as much, do we? No? What do you think of that, then? Would that, would that be fairly true, those of you over 35? When you fall in love now, if it doesn't work out, would I be correct in saying it doesn't hurt as much when you split up? Let us know on the email, OK? Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk. So overall, I thought the film was, was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's a long film. Even in the premier seats, I had to move about in the seat now and again uh, to get myself comfortable. But I enjoyed it. My mate Ron didn't like it so much. He thought it was very long and drawn out and he got bored. Which is a shame, really. I hate going to see a a film with someone knowing that the other person had been bored. But he, he enjoyed my company and I enjoyed his and uh, dropped us uh, back at his house. I picked up my car and uh, off I went. <clears throat> so a great night. Highly recommended, OK? The Harry Potter, the new film. Yes, it is long and drawn out. But if you like Harry Potter, I mean, you can't fail to go wrong, can you? But why only the first 15 minutes in 3D? Strange that. Very, very strange that. Okie doke then. Let's do uh, it. Email time. Here we are in August again. Oh, I meant to say um, it's recently been my mum's birth. See, you remember uh, many times I mentioned my mum. She died in November 2000. And uh, August the 1st, of course, was her birthday. And last Saturday, uh, that would have been August the 1st. So uh, I missed that one. So I feel, feel a bit guilty now, but therefore I'd like to dedicate the show to the memory of my mum. OK. Now, uh, all talking of family, I've been invited to my uncle 
and his uh, uh, wife, my auntie, Uncle Terry and Auntie Marin. It's their 50th wedding anniversary, golden wedding anniversary. I've been invited to that in September, so very much looking forward to that. That'll be in uh, Surrey. Oh, it's over. Oh, yes. I've got posh uncles and aunties. Yes, dear. It's only me who's in the gutter, I'm afraid. Oh, that's where I prefer to be. All right, email time then. Uh, did we have any emails left over from last time, actually? I don't think we did, did we? Are we on a, on a new lot now? <clears throat> Let me just check. We don't like to, like to leave emails hanging around too long, if I can help it. Did we finish, uh, Marsha, did I, fi I did finish your email about the homeless, didn't I, my darling? Yes, or let's wait and be chucked away, okay. Right, um, let's see. Okay, once again, Marsha in uh, South South Florida. South, I've never heard it be called South Florida before, Marsha. It's always Florida, no one's ever said South. Hi Chris, finally catching up with your shows. Yes, yeah, she's been falling behind a little bit. You asked about the weather in Florida during the winter. It's actually quite nice. The temperature in Fahrenheit, well that, that's what I like, Fahrenheit. I mean, we don't understand the, what's all this about centigrade all the time? Oh, I have to say, even the people on the weather forecast, they all talk in centigrade now. Very few people talk in Fahrenheit, but I still do. We like imperial measurements, please. None of this European rubbish, thank you very much. Everything's between 1 and 10. What's all that about? Um, the temperature in Fahrenheit is usually mid to low 70s during the day. It can get quite cold at night, at the very coldest, usually down to the low 50s or rarely 40s. So actually, I mean, you say that's cold. That's, that's not that cold, the 50s, is it? We have something over here called the snowbirds. That is retired folks who come down from the north to escape the brutal winter by living in Florida. I've been looking for a brute for ages. I can't find one, Marsha. We want a, we want a bad boy. Why do we all want bad boys? What's all that all about? Eh? Uh, when the summer comes, they go back up north. It's a bit like the older British people who go off to Spain for a few months every year. Though people often complain about how hot it gets during the summer here, I love it. I just remember when I lived in England how very early it used to get dark. It is really great to look outside at 6 or 7 p.m. in the summer as late as 8 p.m. and still see a bright sun and blue sky, blue sky shining away. Oh, we love that. I have to say, of course, um, our nights here in the UK are now getting longer and already it's, it's, it's like dark now at 9 o'clock at night or even half past eight at night. It's, it's, it's starting to get dark and uh, just a few weeks away, uh, a few weeks ago, of course, it was still very bright at this time, if the cloud ever lifted. I was watching the weather this morning. Um, we were predicting another heat wave in August, and they think this is now not going to come. It will be warm, but not much sun. I'm afraid the solar panels are not doing too well on my roof this year, rather disappointingly. She says, anyway, enough bragging about where I live. There are still things I miss about London too, but definitely not the weather. Yeah, I shouldn't think so as well. It's, it's not been particularly good this year, really, at all, um, Marsha. She says, you were looking at a store bag the other day um, and couldn't read what the bag said because there was a picture of a woman across the words. It actually read American Eagles Outfitters, which is a very popular American clothing brand. So thanks for that, Marsha. I had no idea uh, what it actually said on that carrier bag. So thanks for that. Um, Carl in Yorkshire writes the comment, a fruitcake that doesn't like fruitcake. Fruitcake, oh, the irony. What do you mean, Carl, a fruitcake? Do I look like a fruitcake? Do I have sultanas and currants embedded in my flesh? What a cheek, dear. What are you saying there, lovey? No, I don't, I don't like fruitcake, funnily enough. Some, some I do, but some, it's very, very rich. I like sponge, don't you? Sponge cake with icing. Oh, delicious. Soft, not marzi, I don't like marzipan. Don't like marzipan, soft icing. 
when my mum used to make cakes, she would do icing, but it was always hard on top. I don't think she could, she knew how to do soft icing. How do you do soft icing, by the way? Just to put something in it. I know mum used to buy icing sugar, and I think she'd mix it with just water and then put it on the top. But it would always go hard. How do you make that icing soft? Anyone know? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, uh, Robert in Iceland. Hello, Robert. Sends me a picture. Oh, Chris, I thought you'd like to see an elf house. I found it on my travels to the southern part of Iceland near a town called Selfoss. Selfoss. Okay. We've been touring around Iceland for a few days and have just completed our drive over the highlands. We passed many cyclists on this crossing, and one has to applaud such people. The roads over the highlands are only open during the summer, with tracks being rutted and dusty all the way. The other picture was taken of me during one of our stops, and shows a monument to two Icelandic guys, rather like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. So there we are. And... Um, Indeed, Robert sends in two pictures of little elf houses. Little picture of an elf house, which is like, um, it's a bit like three houses stuck together, but very small. And uh, also another picture of what looks like a large stone in a cage and uh, a child. Is that you, Robert, in the photo there with your, with your sunglasses on? I don't know. And uh, a young child there. Okay. Who is that child? Is that your child? Not sure. Is that, is that your little... Um, is it a girl? Let me have a look. Yes. Is that a girl there? Is that your child? Thank you, Robert. Always a pleasure to hear from our elf correspondent. Robert is like... Um, he's, like the, he's like the guy that, that is in between the elves and the, the human population. He's, he's kind of the... Um, what would you call it? The administrator? No. Um, the the go-between. Here's. Incidentally, uh, those of you watching the show on YouTube may notice that the mirror ball is back. It is hanging behind me, revolving slowly. That was definitely missing. And this program, of course, coming from the mirror ball studio two. Yes, two studios here. Gradually, we are expanding. We are expanding, a bit like my waist, which I still I haven't weighed myself actually for a few days. I must do that. Although I will take my jeans off because they are quite heavy. These are these are I have my 90 pound jeans on today. Oh yes. Look, 90 pound jeans. Oh I, I just just doing a twirl. Just doing a twirl looking at my 90 pound jeans. G Star. Thank you. And um they are quite heavy. And uh, I was at work on Sunday, and I had them on Sunday. And my friend Tom says, Oh, he said you should have gone down to now, where was it he said? Top shop. And he had a nice pair of jeans. And I said, where'd you get those from? He said, Topshop, 30, 30 pounds. So I might go down there. Actually, I might go down after I finish recording today and go and get a pair of those. I feel, the, I feel necessary now to upgrade myself from tracksuit bottoms to jeans. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Tracksuit bottoms to jeans. And he said, you get, get the ones that are loose fit. They're so much more comfortable. We can't do these tight jeans anymore. Not at our advanced years, I'm afraid. Thank you. <laughs> Hello to Gloria, who's also in Florida. Lots of people listening in Florida, in, in between the hurricanes and the tornadoes. How, oh, do you get tornadoes in Florida? I don't think you do. It's just hurricanes, isn't it? I was listening to your podcast at work this morning when you asked about Florida weather. We live near Tampa, which is on the west coast of Florida. November to February, it gets cool overnight, but during the day, it gets up to 60 to 70 degrees, which is uh, that's, that's quite nice. Occasionally, overnight temperatures can get down to 32 degrees. Oh, so that's, oh, so that's freezing. Really? Now, I'm surprised at that. I, ne I never thought you, you got down to freezing in Florida. I believe on the east coast of Florida, in places like Miami, it's even warmer. Miami is pretty far south on the east coast. Jacksonville 
is also on the east coast, but in northern Florida. Their temperatures in the winter average 40 to 60 degrees. The length of the state is about 450 miles, so we do have a real variety of uh, temperatures. Yes, you do. But I mean, looking at looking at the uh, America as an even the United States of America uh, in its entirety, you must have all the different um, temperatures. It's a bit like Australia. People don't realise how big Australia actually is, and you know, for the size of the country, it's very very sparsely populated. What you've got is all the people gathered in certain areas around the coast. Very few people in Australia actually live inland. Most of them are all around the coast. And in Australia, you can have, you have very, very differing weather across the whole region. In the north, you have uh, the tropical weather, which I love. You know, hot and steamy. I, I quite like it like that. And in the bottom, it's more um, uh, uh, temperate. Uh, certainly in Melbourne, the weather in Melbourne is actually very similar to that of the UK, or at least it was when I went there. It was very windy and wet while I was there in Melbourne. You also mentioned people who look down on other people. Oh yeah, that'd be my mate Ron again. Oh, he looks down on everyone, he does. I have a funny story about that. Bruce, my husband and I, works for a major airline and we hear all kinds of airline stories. So here goes. A flight was cancelled because of a mechanical problem. All of the passengers were patiently standing in line, waiting to get rebooked. One man barges up to the front of the line and tells the agent he wants to be rebooked. All of the passengers who had been waiting were curious as to what the airline agent might do. She calmly told him that he needed to get in line. He then yells at her and says, Don't you know who I am? Have you ever come across anyone like that? I have. I, ha I have been, um, not recently, years ago, I've been waiting in a queue, waiting to get in a club, right? When people, DJs that I know, not necessarily that closely, but nevertheless, I would know to say hello to, go to the front of the queue, demand to get in. I said, well, don't you know who I am? That's dreadful, isn't it? I would never ever, if I was a big famous film star or someone like that, I would still queue up. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would still queue up. We have a lot of that. On the, um, on the particular scene that I work on are various newspapers that kind of report about the goings on in different clubs and celebrities and things like that. And often these people who work for these papers will walk round the queue. Oh, hello, I work for so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, then expect to be ushered in past the queue and not having paid to get in. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I, would, I, would, I can't do any of that, I'm afraid. No, thank you. No, 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 no. I mean, who do these people think they are? You only work for a newspaper and... It's nothing special. We're all the same, aren't we? We are all the same. These people who walk around, they think they're better than everyone else. I haven't got the time of day for you. Not at all, thank you. She calmly picks up the intercom and uh, says, Ladies and gentlemen, there is a man up here who doesn't know who he is. Is there anyone that can help him? Actually, is there anyone that can help me? I think I need help. The crowd roared with laughter and were clapping their hands. The man thought he was better than everyone else, threw his hand up in the air and left. Good riddance to him, Gloria. That's what I say. No one knows if he ever got booked on another flight. Your Florida friend, Gloria. I love it, Gloria. Yes, bring them back down to earth, dear. That's what I say. Although there is this little celebrity that I must mention again. And I just wondered if anyone had watched him tagged on to the last video. Did you see the little video? of my nephew Jimmy. If you didn't, you need to watch the video um, of that. And uh, once again for that, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and search out the show 1st of August 2009. And right at the end of the video, it was, it was only on the video, not on the audio, right at the very end of the video is tagged on an extra, uh, it's about eight minutes 
of my little nephew doing his own little show. Yes, once again, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And at the end, uh, if, if you don't want to watch uh, the whole show, go to, the, to about the last eight minutes, I think it is, and then you'll see... Um, the, the the extra little bit of video of my nephew Jimmy, little Jimmy, 12 years old, doing his own part of the show. OK? There's something else I was going to tell you. Oh, yes, uh, the post office box. Um, I had trouble renewing that. Do you remember I was telling you about the post office box? Well, it is sorted now. But honestly, admittedly, I left it till the last minute to pay the renewal fee which wasn't cheap, it was about £120, but I like to keep that going, and just in case people, I know, do like to send in uh, the occasional letter, and indeed things in the post. So, very kind people send in things in. I've got a couple of them um, sitting next to me up on the wall. We've got a plate here from Cat and David on the Isle of Wight. We've got a little thing um, from Suko, a little box of uh, bits and pieces, and uh, uh, we've got the hat from our cat lover Susan and some other bits and pieces, and I like to change those around on the shelving unit next to me. Uh, so I do keep that open. But that, that was a bit of a palaver, because I rang up to uh, renew it. I rang the post office, Royal, I think it was Royal Mail. And uh, I got the, the ever so annoying, you know, answer phone messages about how they're all very busy at the moment. However, your call is important and they will answer it as soon as possible and all the rest of it did. And it went on and on and on. Eventually, someone answered and says, can I take your number and I'll get someone to call you back? I said, well, I want to renew my my um, post office box here. I said, but uh, it is already two days out of date. So is that going to be a problem? Can't answer you, sir. We're just the overflow department. All we can do is take the number, take your phone number, and we will get someone to call you back, hopefully within the hour. OK. Within the hour, he told me. I said, well, uh, will you be in? I said, well, I'm not sure. I'm in and out most of the time today, but I can manage to wait in an hour. OK, sir, can I take your number? So he took it in the end. That's after waiting about 10 minutes, OK? So a blooming phone had been ringing for, 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 for a good length of time. So I stayed in an hour, and guess what? No phone call. So that was on the Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday... They rang five days later. Five, that's dreadful. And I'm surprised. I've always had a lot of time for the post office and I thought that was very, very bad business. Really, I should have got off and gone somewhere else. It's too late now. I've renewed it now, so it's all sorted. I'm going to give you the post address in a second if you ever do want to send anything in at all, OK? Maybe a card or a letter. Or if you're going on holiday and you want to send us a postcard, that's always nice to receive. And I do like to read them out on the show, of course. But fa fancy that. I rang up Thursday. They eventually got back to me Monday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, actually, I've, I, I'm assuming it was them at 9 o'clock in the morning because I heard the phone ring. I thought, who's ringing me at 9 o'clock in the blooming morning? Because that's not the time I get up. You know I work late hours. Anyway, the phone rang again around about 11 o'clock, and it was them. So I'm assuming it was them that rang up at 9 o'clock. But five days later, which I think is shocking, absolutely shocking, that's not how to do business. If you want business, then you run around after people. We've covered the, cus the, the, the customer service subject so many times on this programme. People who work in shops and just can't be bothered. People who sell cars, they just can't be bothered to run around after you to get your money. It's, oh, it's dreadful, dreadful. You know, when I'm at work, I am either a DJ or I do the karaoke. But I, I do do the extra mile, right? If... There are people looking around for a chair and they can't find one and I can see one over there empty. I will go over, if I've got time, and say, are you looking for a chair? They say yes, and I will go and get them the chair. I will go and take empty glasses off tables if I think they're about to overflow and, and put them where, where they're not going to, usually on the bar, if the bar staff are very busy. I don't mind doing that. But you'll find most people... 
certainly DJs, was, it's not my job. I know it's not your job, but nevertheless, go the extra mile. And people appreciate that. They really do. You know, I, I don't get it. I just don't get the, how people are trained now to do customer services. I really don't. Anyway, onwards. A quick email here from Katie on the Isle of Wight, who, who uh, her and her boyfriend sent me in the Isle of Wight plate, which is next to me, who says, um, Cool show the other day. I enjoyed the singing of I Will Survive. Thank you, uh, Katie. The only thing is, Katie... Here in Studio 2, I can't do singing at the moment. I, actually, I don't think I, I, I can't see the point in actually moving. I don't have, actually have a computer in this particular room. I don't see the point in doing that, actually. But I suppose I could still do the occasional sh uh, uh, show from the other room. That would that'd be all right, wouldn't I? If I'm ever going to sing, I'll, I'll just move back into the other room for a show or two. All right, Katie? Quick one here from uh, Joe Morris from American Talk, USA.com. Another fellow podcaster and radio type person who says, just sitting down to another episode of the Ross Patzelt radio show. Uh, Ross Patzelt radio. He does podcasts, but he does do the show live as well. I'm not quite sure when it's on. I think it's Mondays at one o'clock in the afternoon. OK, if you want to listen to his show live. Uh, to find that, go to rosspatzelt.co.uk. rosspatzelt.co.uk. Um, and Joe says, isn't it the coolest thing ever? Look what you started. Me, Ross, Tom Harris, Suko, Millie, heck, even Irvin Distiller. Must make you feel good. Um, what makes me feel good? Making people smile. Making people... Oh. That's wrong. Not making people smile. Helping people to smile. And helping people to think. And helping people to get over unhappy things. I was talking to a doctor friend of mine the other day about... Um, when people are ill and doctors try and help them and the people don't listen... And I don't understand that. And I said, also, it's important for the doctors to listen sometimes. I think the biggest part of being a doctor, perhaps even a specialist doctor, is listening to people. And I was saying, I don't understand when people are given perhaps a second chance. Perhaps they have some sort of disease. Um, something wrong with them and the doctor tells them to do a certain thing perhaps to take tablets at a certain time every day and if they do that everything will be fine and they don't they take a very blasé attitude to the therapy that they're on maybe you have to take tablets at 10 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock at night and it gets to 10 o'clock or whatever and oh, I take them in a couple of hours well the doctor said 10 o'clock and I don't understand people who have been given a second chance through the wonderful medical things that they can do now they're given a second chance and they don't follow the instructions and I just think that's just madness to be given a second chance like that and not stick to the regime. I know lots of people who have to take pills at certain times. And I've been, uh, indeed, in the pub. Oh, I'm supposed to have taken my pills an hour ago. Well, aren't you going to take them? Oh, I'll wait till I get home. But surely that does, that's not good. It'd be a little bit like... Um, Surely it must be a bit like being in the car, OK? And your fuel gauge is now on empty and the red light is flashing. You need to put that petrol in now. But how many people, including myself in this case, 
I thought, oh, I'll just go a little bit further. And they run out of fuel. Because they didn't fill it up when the red light was on. Well, that doctor is telling you that your red light comes on at 10 o'clock at night. And if you don't take that tablet now, damage will be done. Don't, I, I just don't understand people like that who are given a regime to stick to, a drugs regime or something like that, and they don't stick to it after, after they've been given a second to either die or take the pills for the rest of your life. I don't get that at all. Do you know anyone like that? You don't have to say names. I don't, you don't have to tell me names. Or maybe yourself. You could put a um, private email. Please don't read my name, but you can read the email. Anything like that. If you ever want to send in a private email, not for broadcast, put that at the top, and I'll always reply to it. Usually email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um... Uh, Joe also says, loved Robert from Iceland bit on elves from Saturday, July the 25th. Uh, now, listen, listen, uh, Robert, Joe has a suggestion for you here. Um, the elves should have a story with characters and names, adventures, thrills, perils. You know, when we last saw our heroes and tune in next time, just a thought from Joe in Tennessee. Now, there's an idea for Robert in Iceland. How about an elf story, say, no more than, than three to five minutes, perhaps each show or maybe one a week? Do you reckon you could do that, Robert? That would give you something to do, wouldn't it? Tell us what you think about that, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Look, I didn't have time to give you the post address. I've run out of time, I'm afraid. Never mind, I'll give it to you in the next show. Once again, my email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. .co.uk. Thanks very much for watching and listening to the show today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.